Shalom. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakradash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Hey, brothers, I came across this video here, which I'm going to utilize momentarily. And it's a constant reminder why we have to be Bereans, why we have to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Because we have to remember something, a little leaven, leaven what? The whole lump. And of course, YouTube, under, under the Fair Use Act, I'm going to use this video here to hopefully, and Lord willing, Yahweh willing, edify the flock. Let's get right into it. That's what we coming out here to do. That's right. When the Christian church tells you to go to church on Sunday, we say no. Right. God commands us to go to church on Saturday, That's right. which is the Sabbath day. Right. The seventh day, according to the Bible. Now, he's correct about one thing, right? The Lord does tells us to keep the seventh day, the Sabbath day, holy. But something we have to understand specifically about Saturday worship. Well, should I should I say perpetual Saturday worship? That's not the Sabbath day and according to scripture, right? So two things we have to understand before we get into this lesson. That currently we are still utilizing the Gregorian calendar, which, which was implemented by Pope Gregory, okay? Remember... The scripture states, truly the turning of things are upside down. So you got to figure if we're utilizing a Roman calendar, we're not using the time method or the calendar that the Lord gave us to use. Because remember, we lost our custom. We lost our ways. And here is another additional fact about Saturday and how it got its name, right? So Saturday was named after the Roman god of agriculture. Remember, we never used the Roman calendar, right? We never had a, a calendar system Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That was just simply not our custom. So you should be thinking to yourself, so how do we measure times and seasons and days? Well, the Lord was clear. Let's start with Psalms 104, verse 19. He made, who is he? Yahweh Shai, because we know all things are made through him and what? For him. He made the moon to mark what the seasons and the sun to know when to go down right so we see our first example there what else do we see more in genesis chapter 1 verse 14 and yahweh said let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them let them be for signs for seasons and for days and what else years Let's go from there. Let's go from there to Ecclesiasticus, chapter 43, verse 6 through 8. Because remember, precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. He made the moon to serve in her what? Seasons for a declaration of what? Time and a sign of the world. From the moon is the sign of feast. So now we're learning what dictates time and how we tell time. A light that decreaseth in her perfection. The month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. So let's pause right there for a moment. So we've learned in these last three precepts, the moon dictates what? A day, a month, because the, mo the word month comes from the word moon, right? Moon meaning the beginning of what? The month. So the moon again dictates what? A day, a month, a year, and what else? Seasons and what else? Festivals, right? Let's further substantiate our point here. Let's get a few more facts before we dive into more precepts. And it reads, the month, pardon me, the months in the sacred calendar are established as lunar months, right? And the scripture backs this up because it's, it states that we determine a month by what the moon therefore the sighting of the new moon was ordained to establish the beginning of the monthly cycle and therefore the first day of the month right let's get a little bit more information here let's go to wait with me one second brothers i want to get to the point here new moon in scripture no we don't we don't want that one we want Ordentation of the new moon. Let's come down here. The moons 
in the sacred calendar are established as lunar months. Therefore, the sighting of the new moon was ordained to establish the beginning of the monthly cycle. And therefore, the first day of the month, the moon's full cycle of illumination averages about 29 days. Thus, we have our biblical months of either 29 or what? 30 days. The second paragraph is the point. The new moon is a precise astronomical event and can occur on different days. Okay, so let's let's stop right there for a second. So if the new moon, which is the Sabbath, by the way, if the new moon can occur on different days, then guess what that means? The weekly Sabbath will fall on different days too as well because the new moon will be the first day of the month. Remember the Lord says, so in, in, in um, Leviticus chapter 23, you can, see, you can read that in um, verse 1 and 2 and 3. Remember the Lord says, six days shall work be done and on the seventh day is a day of rest. So if the new moon begins or marks the start, the beginning of the week, you got six days after, then on that seventh day will be what? Your weekly Sabbath. Let's keep reading. The determination of the new moon, therefore, must be determined from the time in which it occurs in Jerusalem to ensure the uniformity of religious worship throughout the world, giving increased communication. So let me come from here. Now let's get into a few precepts, right? Let's get into a few more precepts. Um, as we can see here, I want you to pay close attention to something, right? Remember what the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be the beginning of months. It shall be the first month to you of the year. And I'll share this with you. That was, how do you think the Lord dictated that? It had to be what? A new moon, right? Because remember, we learned from Ecclesiasticus and also Genesis, the moon dictated what? The beginning of months, festivals, feasts, and what? Years. Let's go from there. Where do we see a prime example of this? Hold on, brothers. I want to share this with you, too, before I grab the, those additional precepts. See, these are the phases here. The new moon. Then you have the waxing crescent. Then you have the first quarter. And so on and so forth. You have the full moon, which is approximately about 14, 15 days into the month. And then the moon, this is what Ecclesiasticus meant by the moon. She increases in her beauty because it goes from fully dark. Then you see the various phases and it goes full moon and it repeats the cycle. I'll share this with you brothers too to help you under, and hopefully this to help your understanding. Just like your woman, just like my wife, when her monthly cycle comes on, it falls on different days of each month and the subsequent months, right? So the new moon would fall on different days of each month. And that would thus change when the weekly Sabbath would fall, right? Because the Sabbath is what? You start counting. The new moon comes in, that's day one. Then the weekly Sabbath would be what? Two, three, four, five, six, seven days after what? That new moon, okay? Let's come from there. And what do we see prime examples of that? In Leviticus chapter 23, verse 4 through 8, right? Because we want to prove all things, brothers. And we see a prime example of that here in verse 4 through 8, like I said a moment ago. These are the Lord's appointed festivals, the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed time. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's festival of unleavened bread begins for seven days. You must eat bread made without yeast. And here's the kicker here in verse 7 and verse 8, how we can prove this to be true. On the first day is a sacred assembly and do no regular work. Why is that? Because that first day is a new moon, right? It's considered a Sabbath, okay? Verse 8, for seven days... Present a food offering to the Lord, and on the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. See, we see a prime example of that being implemented because on the first day is what? It's a new moon. It's considered what? A Sabbath. Then on that seventh day, they ought to do no ordinary work. It's a sacred assembly again because what? That's your regular weekly Sabbath. 
What do we see another or and or an a similar example of this in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 24? Say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a Sabbath rest. Why is the first day a Sabbath rest of the seventh month? Because that's the beginning of the month and it's a what? New moon. Yep, you got it right. And of course, our people complained of that because <laughs> just like I taught this lesson to my family as well, right? Because those of us who teach, we are held to a greater level of accountability. And I'll share this with you, brothers. Teach the lessons and step out of the way, whether they hear it or forbear it. We, we like the scripture states, cry aloud, spare not, and show my people their transgressions. And of course, our people complain, like my, my family. <laughs> but we know we're not saved by the works of the law. Let me say this to you, brothers. But we ought to practice, practice, practice the law to the best of our abilities. We're saved by grace through faith, right? We should be building up our faith and keeping the laws, the statutes, the commandments to the best of our abilities, the very best. Amos chapter 8, verse 5, it says, and this is our people complaining, when will, will the, when will the new moon be over that we may sell grain? Why is that? Because the new moon was a Sabbath. And the Sabbath, meaning the weekly Sabbath, in that we may market wheat, skimping on the measures, boosting the price, and cheating with dishonest scales. See, Jake ain't changed, man. You know, and in your heart, if you really desire to keep these, to keep these laws, these statutes, these commandments, you know, they're not a, like the Lord said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes, it's going to take some time to adjust, but you will see that pursuing the Lord and seeking him 10 times more, you're going to have a natural desire to keep his ways to the best of your abilities. Yes, we're in captivity, but the onus is still on us brothers to do our very best, Right. To seek him ten times more, but I just wanted to make this quick lesson, brothers, and I hope it was. I hope it was. It, it was edifying. All right. Real quick before I finish up, I wanted to say this while it's on my mind. Sunday worship was instituted by Constantine. Okay. Saturday worship was instituted by the little hats, the small hats. Right. Hopefully through this lesson you saw that our Sabbaths, they change from month to month. All right. They change, man. Okay. These other, you, 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 you have to refine and look, become a Berean, right? Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Shalom, brothers.